Welcome back. My name is Heather and today we are doing the Summerween reading vlog for this year. I am of course a day late. Shh, it's okay though. Um, I forgot that it was like the start of Summerween but I have a stack of books here that I want to get to. Two of them I know that I'm going to read but then I have some more books just in case I get done with these books that I can pick from to read during Summerween. I got my books in what does it say oh books and spooks shirt on i have already done some stuff today charles and i made a coffee this morning This one's liquid. Oh. Childs can't do that. Mm -mm. Because it will spill on your shirt and your pants and mm. your underwear. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, to help pour the milk in. Okay, hold on. Huh? So hold on. Okay, 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 okay. Well, we're making coffee. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, we have to do the ingredients. Okay. Here. There we go. Oh. <laughs> milk. That's good. Thank you. Is that chocolate milk? It is not chocolate milk. Then what is it? It's regular milk. Oh. I thought it was chocolate milk. Hey, is that your coffee? Mm-hmm. That's how we make a coffee. Yes. With my cute little cup, I read outside for a little bit. I'm gonna start reading this while we sit out here. It's a really pretty morning, and I'm gonna start reading this for my first book for Summerween. And yeah, it it's and I just woke up from a three-hour nap, so it's been a day. So we're gonna go through the books that I know that I'm going to read first. So the first one that I started reading this morning is Sour Candy. This is the novella one, the horror novella one that I picked out. And this is about a man who has gotten a son. He just met him. And supposedly the dad is supposed to be a hostage. I only got to like page three before I had, I had the mom. Like I had to do mom stuff, you know. And then I fell asleep. So there's that. We're gonna we're gonna do that. That is for one of the prompts. The other book that I'm gonna read is this one right here. This one is set in the summer slash fall. It kind of goes all the way through that. And I believe that this is a domestic thriller, so it hits the thriller prompt. It hits the orange prompt, orange on the cover prompt. It also hits the set in the fall prompt. And then the rest of the books that I have are just some random books that I picked out. Oh, there's also some orange. Um, there's also some orange right there. Anyways, the rest of the books that I picked out that I've been wanting to read for a while. The Final Support Group by Grady Hendrix. This is summer. It's, I mean, it's set in the summer. It's about final girls in a support group. So, uh, yeah, that sounds fun. Why is that orange, but then that's red? Anyways, this is called The Death in the Family. This is about... A secluded island, a de um, NYPD detective barely surviving a serial killer. She joins the Thousand Island region of New York 
and she's having to go after a raging person on the island. So, okay, yes. And then this is a book that I've had on my TBR for a while. This is called The Watch Girls, and I don't really know what it's about besides four missing girls. Somebody's watching them. Maybe they get away, maybe they don't. So there's that. I have a theme of black and red books at the moment, which seems fitting. These are the black and red books that I have. So yeah, that's those are the that's my TBR for Summerween. And then also reading in the dark, which is easy to do because I can read when it's dark nighttime outside. Am I missing one? I don't know. But let's get to reading. Good morning. It is the ninth, so two more days of Summerween. I finally wrote stuff on my whiteboard. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to let you know, I finished this yesterday. I'm giving it 3.5 stars. It was a pretty fast paced, um, short story novel or novella, novella, whatever you want to call it. It was about 83 pages. So I believe, well, no, it's about 75 pages. So I believe that this is considered a short story, but we're going to call it a novella anyways. 3.5 stars. It was, it was okay. Like it was, it kept me captivated the entire time. It didn't really get a lot of like information about what was actually going on. It um, kind of skidded over stuff and it didn't really explain everything. So it was all right. I would read from this author again. There's a short or a novella short story called Blanky that I've heard some things about. But um, yeah, I believe that if this was like a full length novel, I would have really, really enjoyed it because it had all of the things that I look for in my horror. It had a creepy kid, which sometimes I don't really like creepy kid stories, but it had a creepy kid in it. It has some supernatural aspects to it, paranormal things. It also had a lot of like, was Paul really going through what he was going through? Was he imagining in it? Was he dreaming it? All these things. I liked the whole premise of the book, but it was it just kind of left some left some questions for me and needed a little bit more explanation into things that happened. So 3.5 stars. Then I started reading this book. I'm re listening to it on audio. I'm halfway through it. <laughs> this domestic thriller, y'all. Wow. You're okay. If you do not like characters that are not likable. You're not gonna like this book because these two women in this book, Kat and Nina, is that her name? Nina? I don't know, I'm horrible with names. Yes, Nina. They are okay. Kat is married to a very high up influential man in this part of California. And they are, oh, by the way, this is set in the fall, so that covers that. Sorry. This is also set in the fall, sort of. It's kind of like summer fall. But okay back on track. Cat is married to William. He is a very influential man. He owns this huge um, company. Evidently, Cat and William created this company from the ground up together. They've been together for about 13 years. There's some talk about infertility in here as well. Cat is struggling to get pregnant and it's kind of taking a toll on their marriage a little bit. And then we have this woman named Nina who just moved into the neighborhood. She just got hired on at Cat's husband's company or their company as a life coach type person. She's a doctor. She's of psychology and stuff. And Nina evidently has a thing for married men and yeah. So Cat and Nina are just going back and forth. They're frenemies. Basically keep your enemies closer, you know. And they're frenemies. Nina is attracted to William. Kat knows that she's attracted to William. She has picked up on a lot of the on a lot of the cues that Nina is like giving out, you know, but Nina doesn't care because Nina gets what she wants. And it's about social light, social light work or social light life. These women, Kat, she's very, very, very rich. She she kind of lives off her husband's money. She's the president of the wine club. She she's the president of like the tennis whatever. I'm not the president. Anyways, it's just you're not gonna like any of these characters. I don't like any of these characters, but it's so 
drama filled and it's a dumpster fire that I am very intrigued. I fell asleep listening to this book last night and it is just one of those books that I'm like because <laughs> you know that there are really people out there that are like this right that are better than everybody just because they have more money they're better than you and then there are people out there like okay I'm going to show you that you're not better than me and I'm going to get your husband and that's exactly the vibes going on in this book y'all but something at the very beginning happened I don't want to go through that because I don't want to ruin anything but we are at a point in the prologue where Nina is speaking to a detective about something that happened. So you know something has happened at the very beginning and you know that Nina is involved and probably Kat is involved, but you don't know what happened. And it's just building on to the story of what happened. And William, mm -mm -mm, no, no, William, you did, you did wrong. You did wrong. Even though Kat is annoying, you did wrong. You did wrong. But that's all I'm going to say. So I plan, I plan on finishing this today. Also, I got the book. Hold on. I was able to get these two audiobooks as well. Death in the Family and Watch the Girls. I said the, the Watch Girls first because I thought that's what it was. But it's Watch the Girls. So I have both of these audiobooks as well. And I'm planning on finishing this book today because this fulfills my orange. This fulfills my novella and my um, fall. This is kind of set in the fall too. So we can, we can include these both. But if I get through these, then I have completed the challenge. All the challenges are ready because I read this last night, but I didn't get any clips. So if I didn't get any clips, it didn't happen, right? So yeah, I have these two books on audio as well. So when I finish this book and give you my rating, I'll let you know which book I'm going to pick up. I'm pretty, pretty positive it's going to be this one because I'm very intrigued in this one. But just wanted to fill you in and let you know the update. I'm still wearing my Spooks books and Spooks shirt, by the way, just to, because it's summer and everything. All right. <laughs> I just finished this book and I'm giving it five stars. While this book has all the unlikable characters in it that you will ever need, it has drama, it has like socialite issues, rich people issues, you know, those type, that type of thing. It was also super entertaining. It was like a train wreck happening and you just watch the train wreck happen all the way through. Nina. Mm. I did not feel sorry for her about what happened at the end at all because she knew exactly what she was doing. I guess she didn't realize what she was getting into with Kat, but she under underestimated Kat a lot. And William's a horrible person. That is Kat's husband. Uh, the only person I really felt sorry for in this book was Matt because Matt is Nina's husband and really just loves his wife and wants the best for her. And he just gets crapped on the entire time. But he did he did come out strong in the end. So, um, yeah. Uh, didn't really feel that much about William because he's, mm, he's a piece of work. But for some reason, Kat loves him. And she did what she did in this book. She did it. But like I said, I, <laughs> I just thoroughly enjoyed this book. I enjoyed just... The, like it's 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 a book full of horrible people just like how people like to watch reality tv it, it's exactly like that if you like housewives or if you like that pump band or whatever i don't even know what it is i, I don't i don't know what it is um because i haven't watched it but if you just like reality tv that has like super big drama constantly all the time you never know what's going to happen this is your book right here. It is like a reality TV show and you're just watching these people and it's just happening. But there are some twists and turns in here. There are some talk about infertility in here. So trigger warning for that. There's talk about cheating in here. You actually see it happen quite a bit. And it made my blood boil a little bit because... Mm. Mm. Anyways, 
I just, I don't know, I enjoyed this book. Five stars. I really like AJ or AR Tori's work. I've only read one other book by this author, but I'm going to continue reading this author because everything I pick up has been a five star so far. So now moving on, I'm going to start reading Watch the Girls, not the Watch Girls, but Watch the Girls. I'm going to start reading this. I have the audiobook, so I'm going to start listening to that and finish up my work day. And I will let you know when I am 50% into this book or showing you that I'm reading in the dark. Something like that. It is the 10th. I thought this was over, thought this video was over, or this readathon was over on the 11th. It's actually over on the 13th. So I still got some days. I still got three days, y'all, to read more of these books. I have this book. I got the audiobook for this one. And I also have this book as well. So we shall see. I have high hopes for this. I read some of the reviews, not the ones that go into great detail, but they have promised that this book is dark. It's twisty, it's turny, it's a dark um, psychological suspense thriller that could cross over to horror, depending on the reader. So I'm very excited. And this is this author's first adult book too, but it's it's been given high praise, so let's go. Let's get into it. Alright, I'm at the 50% mark of this and not a lot, oh, well, that was really close. Not a lot of stuff is happening so far, <clears throat> but we're following this girl named Liv. She is a, um, says washed up actor in the, um, in the uh, synopsis sorry y'all I just got done eating lunch and I'm putting my bowl in the sink so she is considered a washed up actor or actress and she is trying to figure out what happened to some girls that went missing she got hired to find out what happened to these girls. There's four girls that have gone missing in this specific town. And they, the lighting is horrible. <laughs> and she's just like trying to figure out what happened to them. In this small town, nobody is very reliable. Everyone is very secretive. You know that there's some, obviously there's stuff going on, but you don't know who the actual like culprit is. There's many, many, many different suspects so far. One of the suspects is somebody, well, to me, one of the suspects to me, there's like three. The old dude, the sheriff, and the dude that Liv likes at the moment. So those are my main suspects because the dude that Liv likes right now, he's a little too nice. And he knows exactly what she's doing and he's a little too nice. So he's my suspect number one. Suspect number two is the sheriff because sheriffs always know something and they always, yep, okay. And number three is the old dude. They're making out his son to be the suspect, but I think the old dude has something to do with it. So there's, there's my, uh, there's, oh, 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 and the small town hosts like a big party every year, like a mute, like a movie festival. And... Liv's sister, Gemma, has showed up too. And Gemma and Liv don't get along. Gemma's like this A class or A star, A list, what, however you determine like super popular actors. And Liv just got fired from her, uh, from her reality show. So she's now trying to figure out what to do. And somebody offered her a bunch of money to go figure out what happened to these girls. They also have a younger sister named Miranda, and she went missing like 20 years ago or something like that, 10 years ago, something. And um, they don't know what happened to her. So does she have something to do with it? Like, is she involved? I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. So there's just a lot of mystery. It's a psychological thriller. Personally, I'm liking it so far, even though a lot, not a lot of stuff's going on, but you get a lot of character building the whole atmosphere of this small town is really weird and oh and the old dude's family with the son that people find suspicious he has wolves 
and wolves are a big part of the story because somebody with a wolf mask is running around trying to scare Gemma and trying to scare Liv. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. There's my update though. I'm gonna go back to work. Alrighty y'all. I finished this book today. I gave it four stars. The, I will say that the beginning of this book is rather slow, but after the 50% mark, it goes through really quickly. And I enjoyed this book a lot. Um, I enjoyed seeing Liv try to figure out what happened to the four girls that disappeared. I came to the conclusion very quickly who the person was. Like I said in my last one, there was three suspects and I was right with one of them. Uh, and it, this, so this book all focuses on this one movie. And it's an indie movie and it was rather graphic. It was about wolves and about people just banging all the time and uh, being, being very explicit and making people feel very uncomfortable. And it was one of those films that changed the film industry in this. So it talks about a lot about the industry. Viv also has some body dysmorphia, I believe. She talks about her weight a lot in here. So there is talk about weight and there's also talk about how if she eats too many calories a day, that's going to mess up her weight. She has to maintain this specific weight and all this kind of stuff. And that was rooted from her mother when she was younger because her mother wanted her to be a child star and she was, but as she got older, she kind of like fell out of it and she's like, I don't care about this. So her sister Gemma is the one that's actually the famous one in here. And the twist at the end with Gemma, I was like, girl, come on now. Come on. They didn't really ever have like a close relationship. Miranda and Viv had a closer relationship than Gemma and Viv did, or Liv did. And um, yeah, so it was weird, but I enjoyed the weirdness of it. I'm being very vague because I need to be very vague. Just know going into this book that it's going to be a wild ride. It's going to be weird. And wolf references are, are in here a lot. And it's just, it's about the movie industry and about how, how people have very different preferences than other people. And how people will do anything to get on top. So, there's a lot of that in here. And it was just a wild ride. Wild ride. So, enjoyed it though. I, I recommend it. Read, read some of the reviews. Read the synopsis of this and see if it's for you. It's not going to be for everybody though. The next book that I'm going to get into now is Death in the Family. And this is going to be my book that I'm going to be reading for the rest of today. And I'm going to finish the prompts with this book. Because I'm going to read this one at night and I'm actually going to capture it. Because I haven't captured me reading at night yet. Or in the dark or whatever. So, yeah. And then if I have time for the remainder of the week, I will get to this as well. I might not finish it in this in this video, but I will get to it. Ooh, it has, mul it has different media in here. I like those kind of books. It has like... Hold on, let me find one at the beginning so I don't ruin it ruin it for anybody. It has like news articles and stuff in here. I like multimedia type books. So there we go. I know this hasn't been very Halloween-y, but I just didn't feel like getting all my Halloween-y stuff out. <laughs> I'll fill you in when I'm 50% into Death in the Family. So I'm putting Charles to bed and I'm reading in the dark because this is what I do like every night when I'm putting him to bed. I'm reading this one, Death in the Family, so I'm going to listen to it while he goes to sleep, and I'm going to read in the dark, because his, his room is rather dark, and yeah, just letting you know.
is the really Are you? Yeah, I tried to be quiet with the fine sneaky quick sneaky sneaking of the little but then I chose to get my head. I am halfway through this book. It is the 13th. I read a little bit of this last night, but I eventually just like fell asleep because I was really tired. But it's the 13th. It's the last day of Summer Ween, and I am almost through with this. I, well not almost through, I'm halfway through. This is reminding me of the game Clue. Plus it's also reminding me of that movie Knives Out. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a really, really good movie. You need to watch it. I'm sure most people have seen it by now. But this is about a family who is rich. You find out that they all have their own little secrets. A guy named Jasper ends up missing. There's also a lot of blood on his side of the bed where he sleeps. So they're thinking that he was murdered or, you know, he, he he's hurt and he's missing. Some people in the family think that this is all Jasper's way of trying to get back at everyone. So there's a lot of secrets and backstabbing going on and I am so loving it. And I really like, uh, what's her name? Shay, Shanna, Shay, Shana. Really like her. She's the detective on here and her partner's name is Tim. They're on the small island with this family and they all are just, all the secrets are coming out and I'm just like, <laughs> I'm loving it, loving it. But it, again, it just reminded me of Clue, the game Clue. The murder game and it's also reminded me of knives out just it has that it has those vibes and it's really fast paced and it's a fun read even though it's about murder maybe anyways halfway through this i will update you probably tomorrow because i'm going to continue reading this tonight if i update you tonight then i will have completed my challenge except one book for summer Wayne. finished this. I gave it 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed this whodunit crime thriller. There's a lot of twists and turns. None of the characters are really likable in this at all. So if you don't like those kind of stories, I don't think you'll really like it. But if you do like this kind of stories and you like putting together a case in puzzle piece form where you think these people did it, but they really didn't do it, but they're all horrible people. And it, yeah, it was just, it was a wild ride and I really enjoyed it. 4.5 stars. It was good. I also like that Shanna was not a perfect protagonist at all. I like Tim. I wish he had a little bit more screen time than he than he got. Tim is Shanna's partner, by the way. I really liked him. And I liked Shanna being able to talk through her problems and Shanna being able to realize that somebody in her life was not a very good person. So enjoyed this enjoyed the family dynamic even though they were there they were very dysfunctional but it was a fun read i'm going to continue with this series so that ends this video i know that this video wasn't the most exciting thing in the world but it's just my life you know but i hope you enjoyed it pick up any of these books i recommend them if you like any of them if you liked what i said about them pick them up but i will see you on the next one have a good day bye